Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the top 10 places for you to shop at J-Beauty in Japan. These are my personal recommendations and where I tend to shop whenever I visit. I will make sure to note the specific location of each store I visited, although they are accessible across most of Japan. So if you want to find the store closest to where you might be staying, I would recommend doing a quick Google search. First up, we have Don Quixote. I feel like this is the one that comes to mind for most people when shopping in Japan and rightfully so as it is probably the best one to visit for a one-stop shop. If you are short on time during your trip and want to find everything on your Japan shopping list in one location, Donkey really is where it's at. They have everything from food, clothes, electronics, supplements, tea, toys, um, things for babies, cosplay items, an 18 plus section, and lots and lots and lots of options for what we call omiyage in Japan. Essentially souvenirs and gifts to take home to your friends and family, because what is a Japan trip if you don't bring back some Gundam promo, Pokemon goodies, or some cute socks? In terms of beauty shopping, you will find all of the most popular products like your DHC lip balm, Biore SPFs, and Melano CC essence and they are often sold in multi-packs for a slightly cheaper price. I did notice that Donkey stocked a fair number of KBD brands too, although if you want a wider variety of other Japanese brands that you may not usually hear about when browsing online, you might want to consider shopping elsewhere. Personally, I find the shopping experience at Donkey very overwhelming and overstimulating. For example, here is a clip taken in the store and what it may sound like. <laughs> Not too relaxing, right? The shelves are also often unorganized and many products are just chucked into baskets without much order. I like to take time browsing and exploring when it comes to discovering new products in J-Beauty, so it is just not my preferred place to shop, although it is for sure an experience that everyone should try when in Japan. They do also have a tax-free counter at most big donkeys in Tokyo, which is a plus, although you do have to spend over 5,000 yen and technically are not supposed to open and use the goodies and until you are back in your home country. I know the question will come up, so I will link some resources on tax-free shopping in Japan in the description. And in terms of pricing, most stores do sell things around the same price when it comes to beauty products in Japan, although Donkey may have some bargains on specific products, just not usually a blanket or store-wide sale. Also, if you do visit a Donkey, I highly recommend getting their yakimo, which is baked Japanese sweet potato. They are actually pretty well known for it, and it is so sweet and caramelized on the inside while the skin is soft enough that you can eat it whole. Next we have the ultimate beauty store at Cosme. When it comes to a one-stop shop purely for beauty products, at Cosme is where you want to be and specifically the Tokyo flagship store. I did have a chance to film there before trading hours so please make sure to check out the two-part shopping guide of at Cosme Tokyo if you haven't already. There are other at Cosme stores across Japan. I did also visit the one in Ueno briefly but it does not have the full variety of products like the Tokyo flagship store. They have everything from high-end luxury brands to Japanese department store brands, affordable drugstore products, and one of the biggest variety of K-beauty brands as well. Pricing is usually recommended retail price and they don't do promotions often, although the store is super well set up and they have testers for almost everything which you may not find in a lot of other stores. They also have a place for you to sit and charge your phone as well as lockers to store your bags while shopping. And the other great thing about At Cosme is their ranking systems. So if you are new to J-Beauty or overwhelmed with the endless number of products, At Cosme has rankings displayed in store that can help you navigate through which products are most popular in Japan. Once again, I do explain and go through each section of the store in the dedicated video, so please watch those for full details. In the next portion, I'm going to be talking about drugstores. Japan has quite a number of different drugstore chains and you will probably see different ones depending on which part of Japan you are in. These are the ones that I personally shop at most frequently and most likely to be seen around Tokyo and surrounding areas. First up is my favorite drugstore, Matsumoto Kiyoshi. 
also often shortened as Matsukiyo. To be honest, I think it's my favorite because it's the one that I've been going to since I was a kid as there was a store literally five minutes walk away from my grandparents' place where I would always stay while in Japan. It is the biggest drugstore chain in Japan with over 3,400 stores nationwide, being the first drugstore to have a location in every single prefecture of Japan. They also have 55 locations outside of Japan in Thailand, Taiwan, Vietnam, and Hong Kong, so probably the one that most people would recognize while in Japan. As there is one on pretty much every street corner in Tokyo, they really do come in all shapes and sizes. The footage you are seeing was filmed in one of the Asakusa stores which I would say is about the average size you will find in Tokyo although there are some that are so small you can barely spread your arms across and then some that are four stories high. I think the biggest one is the Ikebukuro Part 2 store which I tried to get permission to film in but failed so it's a shame I can't really show you guys how it looks but if you do happen to pop by Ikebukuro while in Tokyo I highly recommend it to visit the Matsukiyo there. They also have one of the biggest Pokemon centers around the corner so you can definitely make a day out of it. The other thing I like about Matsukyo is that they produce a lot of their own in-house brands. They have multiple skincare lines from Matsukyo to Matsukyo Lab, Woman Method, Aruginan and more and it's not just the beauty brands. They have their own brand version of pretty much everything in store. Medicine, snacks, everyday household items and I'm actually taking their brand of vitamins at the moment which have been working really well for me too. I don't think any other drugstore has such a fully fledged product lineup of their own brand so that's definitely worth checking out too. They also have a point card and app which fairly frequently allows you to get 10% off coupons and points that you can use towards your purchases which I do end up using a lot while there but the setup and everything is in Japanese which would be hard if you don't speak it. Next drugstore is Koko Kara Fine which is actually under the same company as Matsukiyo as it is called Matsukiyo Koko Kara and Company hence why they do sell a lot of the same brands and some Matsukiyo brands too. I feel like you see this drugstore more often a little bit outside of central Tokyo. The one I filmed at was my local store in Chiba and I just like the setup of it more than other drugstores. I don't know if it's just the ones that I've happened to visit but they seem more spacious and organized and it was very customer friendly by having things like sponges and cotton to test the products. Of course they have all of your most popular makeup and skincare brands but also stocked a number of brands and products that I didn't really see in other drugstores along with some K-beauty and decent collection of men's beauty too. Next we have Kusuri no Fukutaro which was probably the second most visited drugstore during my time living in Japan. They have a cute little dog as their brand icon so keep an eye out for this puppy. In terms of beauty shopping it is pretty basic with what they stock although I did notice they had a lot of add-ons and freebies with your purchases which is always a nice treat. I don't actually know if they do this at every location but they did at the Asakusa store where I filmed. Why I choose to shop here over other drugstores is actually because they do more sales and promotions if you have their app or point card. Once again, I know that's harder for people who don't speak Japanese or visit very infrequently, but if you do go to Japan often or live there, which I know a lot of my viewers do, it'll be worth your while to sign up. Compared to other drugstores, you don't have to reach a milestone to use your points. You can use them starting from one point, Plus they have something called Fukuchan Day which occurs on any days that have a 9 so the 9th, 19th and 29th of every month. They take 10% off your purchase just by having a point card. So this would be the drugstore I would recommend for locals to shop at. So this next store had me totally fooled as I thought it was just a beauty store until I was doing a little bit of research for this video and it is the drugstore Ainz and Torupe. Why I say it had me fooled is because I genuinely did not even realize that it was a drugstore from its setup and aesthetic. As you can see in the footage, it really doesn't give that cluttered drugstore vibe. Everything is set up in a more thoughtful way, making it easier to shop in a more open and spread out space compared to other drugstores. So I think this one is definitely more for the relaxed shopper. I also noticed that they had quite a wide variety when it came to K-beauty. I even spotted Claire's, which I don't think I saw anywhere else in Japan, which was really exciting. And they also had a really wide variety of 
affordable sun care products, which surprisingly I did not see as much at at cost me. They also had a really good variety of makeup brands, high-end drugstore skincare, as well as a section for sensitive skin. Aisles were set up really well in terms of categories and would probably be less confusing to navigate, especially if you don't speak or read Japanese. The Asakusa store where I filmed also had a whole separate section that focused on hair care and health care like supplements and even some accessories. I believe they have a multi-story store in Harajuku too, so definitely pop in for a browse if you come by one. Now we are moving on to what we call variety shop in Japan, essentially variety shop as they sell a variety of products, not just beauty. First, we have Loft, which was probably one of my absolute favorite stores to grow as a kid. Once again, when it comes to beauty, we do tend to see a lot of the brands that we've already seen, although maybe a bit more focus on some Western brands in both makeup and skincare. Also, surprise, we ended up seeing Pecan Bear. Literally the only place we saw it, and unfortunately the only product they stocked was the toner, but it was still really cool to see. I do often get the question where to find K-Beauty in Japan, and to be honest, the best option really is online on sites like Q10 because what is available in store is still quite limited. But the main reason why I went to Loft, especially as a kid, was because of all the stationery. I don't buy too much stationery these days, but whenever I go to Loft, I get this sudden urge to buy some new pens or restart my sticker collection because Japan seriously has the cutest stationery that is very good quality. Next is Plaza, which I personally would consider to be somewhat of a similar vibe and setup as Loft, but with a heavier focus on beauty. The thing I noticed about Plaza is that they have more niche beauty brands that some other stores do not. They have a lot of K-beauty, brands produced by Japanese influencers, and a bit more variety on things like fragrances, hand and body care. Once again, the shopping experience is a little more superior, and I felt like I saw more young girls shopping. Shopping there. So it's kind of like that trendy location to shop. Plaza also frequently features special brand and character collabs, which I am all for. At the time I filmed, they had Pez, like the toy candy, as one of their featured collections, which was very colorful and cute, as well as a variety of Western character merch like Powerpuff Girls, Snoopy, Care Bears, and SpongeBob. Actually, their product selection does have quite the Western influence and often stock snacks from overseas as well, hence why it is quite a popular place for people to get trendy and cute foreign gifts, which coming from someone who can buy Skittles and Cadbury chocolate from the local grocery store is kind of funny to think about. Next we have Hanzu, which used to be called Tokyo Hanzu, and I didn't even know that they rebranded until this last trip back. I would truly describe Hanzu as a variety store, and the store size itself is quite large compared to the others. They actually started off as a DIY store, hence the name Hands, plus the old logo was literally two hands since they wanted to reflect that DIY theme of building something with your own hands. I just said hands like a thousand times, goodness. <laughs> They do still have craft items, although it is now considered more a home improvement lifestyle store. Plus, great for us, they have expanded into carrying a lot of beauty products too. Hanzu was actually quite interesting for me to explore because they had more niche Japanese brands, often ones that I had never seen before or found in other stores. They even had Harbour, which is quite a popular brand in Japan, but you used to only be able to get it via mail order, along with quite a few natural-based brands, which I feel like is not quite as common in Japan. They also probably had the whitest variety when it came to body care products, which was really cool to see. The store I went to was in Chiba, so out of the way for most people, although their flagship store in Shibuya, which consists of eight floors, has basically everything you could ever think of. They also carry a lot of novelty things that could be a fun memento or souvenir to take back home. And the last one to complete the top 10 stores to shop J Beauty in Japan is Muji. Definitely a personal choice and not somewhere most people would think of when it comes to beauty shopping in Japan, but I gotta say, I never won't stop by a Muji store. Luckily, I do have one pretty close to me where I live in Australia, so I can access a lot of items back home, but for those who do not have a Muji store near them, you have to visit one while you're in Japan. If you want simple, fuss-free skincare, Muji may be right up your alley. They are super famous for their toning water, and the prices are pretty unbeatable for the quality. They also carry my favorite favorite oil cleanser of all time and have so many little knickknacks that you didn't know you needed. 
like nail files, hair ties, things you use every day, but tend to grab whatever's cheapest at the store, but it's kind of shitty, so you end up buying more. Yeah, stuff like that. Muji is full of them and are really good quality for the price. I also tend to buy a couple small bottles of their pure oils like jojoba and sweet almond oil as they are so multi-use, plus I can't get them back home. Oh, and the other thing I can't get in Australia is their SPFs, which are really, really popular. So I did pick up some of those this time around. While you are there, you need to check out the rest of the store because beauty is such a small slither of what they offer. They have everything from furniture, clothes, storage, kitchen, bathroom, stationery. Oh, stationery. I used to buy all of their pens and notebooks while I was in school and decorate them. Like I feel like everybody did that at my age. I actually feel like in the global market, Muji may be most well known for their stationery these days. And of course, last but not least, the food. They do not have any food at the Muji stores in Australia. So this is where I go a little crazy. A must try are their Bamukuhen. They have so many different flavors and also really seasonal ones. Another thing that is a staple from Muji is their curry. Oh, literally so yum. And again, they have so many different types. They also have things like instant matcha and hojicha latte powder. Great things to chuck in your luggage to take home. I'll leave a few more snack recommendations from Muji on the screen, but yeah, definitely a store you need to visit in Japan. Well, there you have it guys, the ultimate guide to beauty shopping in Japan. This video really did take a lot of time and effort and sneaking around stores in Japan to put together. So if you did enjoy it, please leave a like and a comment to which store you want to visit first. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel as it really does help me out. Plus, you don't want to miss out on any upcoming Japan content as I will be going back again later this year. Thank you guys as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Mwah.